Hey guys, welcome back to the Tea Party Podcast. It's a podcast where you find new friends and new music. And this week I am joined by a Texas native who's been selected as part of CMT's Next Artist Discovery and just put out a brand new EP and then a brand new song after that. I'm talking about Julia Cole. And Julia, thanks for jumping on here with me. Hey, of course. Thanks. Absolutely. And uh, before we get too far into this, let's kind of just start with the Julia Cole story. Give us kind of the Wikipedia version of growing up outside of Houston and how you got into music. So I grew up in a family of, all, you know, all girls. I have two sisters. And my dad pretty much had us all in sports growing up, and that was it. So I spent my entire childhood playing all sorts of different sports. And um, when I got into high school, my teammates and coaches would hear me kind of singing in the locker room or on the bus or whatever. And they asked me to start doing the national anthems for my own game. So I started to sing the anthem before all my volleyball and basketball games. And then word kind of spread, and I started to sing for the Houston Texans, the Astros, NASA, the Houston Dynamo, um, the Rodeo, just all sorts of huge events and really fell in love with performing and singing and kind of knew that that was going to be the the next step. And so I've just kind of transitioned from athletics into music that way. And that's kind of how it all started. Well, so then growing up, you played volleyball and basketball and then uh, even heading into college, um, you played volleyball. Did you choose Vanderbilt because of volleyball or because it was in Nashville or was it just kind of a, a, a lucky happenstance kind of a thing? You know, it's funny how it all worked out because when my older sister is two grades above me and I remember my freshman year of high school, I was so upset because my spring break I spent going on a college tour visit for her because she was a junior in high school and she had to go visit all these schools that she was looking at going to. And I actually fell in love with Vanderbilt on that tour. So it was, and it's because they have an incredible creative writing department. And I really wanted to be in the creative writing program and be an author. And I wrote a book in high school and was always in a bunch of poetry contests and just always loved the art of crafting words together. So that's actually why I originally fell in love with Vandy because I wasn't even into music yet at that point you know that was my freshman year of high school and then I I'm trying to think if I I don't think I ever considered any other schools really Vandy was the only one I applied to and it's on music row so it kind of all just made sense and fell into place together well I can imagine that I mean as somebody that you know wants to be in the music scene I can't really think of a, a better school to go to than than Vandy and, and you're there. I mean are, are you still in Nashville or did you move back to Houston? Still in Nashville. Well, that makes it even easier then. Oh I love it. <laughs> Nashville is definitely home for me now. I mean I go back to Houston as much as I can to see my family but I always joke the only thing that could make Nashville better is if it was in Texas. <laughs> I <laughs> I feel like there's a couple of people that might agree with you on that one. <laughs> so And hopefully on a coast. If I had a beach, if there was a beach and it was in Texas, I'd be set. I feel like everybody might be in Nashville. I mean, it it's getting right. crowded as it is, <laughs> but if they put a beach yep. there. <laughs> oh yeah, but I love it. So when you so you went to Vanderbilt and then obviously, you know, now you're into music and you knew that you were going, you know, you kind of wanted to follow that path. Did you always know that it was going to be the style that you play kind of the country R and B style? I've always had kind of a, an R and B vocal. And it was always funny because growing up people would joke like, you sing like a black girl and it was funny because I, everyone in my family is kind of musical, but not really like the soulful way that I sing. And I don't know if that just came from 
me growing up listening to people like, you know, Beyonce, Kelly Clarkson, Mariah Carey, and, you know, these incredible vocalists that I just loved trying to, to sing along with, or if it was really just like the Houston R&B influence of all my teammates on volleyball and basketball teams, but it definitely has been that way since I started. And I think it also has to do with the fact that I started first on piano. My mom had us taking piano lessons when we were little kids. And when I started learning how to write songs and really even just how to perform any songs at all, piano was the only instrument I knew. So I picked songs that were piano based. And I think a lot of those were uh, like in the pop or the R and B world. And it took me a while to realize that, you know, you can take a song that's played on guitar and convert it to piano and vice versa. I just, I really wasn't as educated in transposing things and, and all of that until I got to Nashville and, you know, picked up guitar and started learning it that way. But I obviously grew up in Texas where country music is so prevalent and absolutely love it. And I think that's the country influence that I have is more on the lyrical side of things because I love the way that people focus on word craft in the country music art so much more than a lot of other genres. It, it's like the lyrics are everything. And in Nashville, songwriting is really respected. Like you, the songwriters here, you could argue get even more street cred on Music Row than, than the artists. Well, and you really, in in your songs, you really do kind of lean on that storytelling and just listening to your music, you can tell that there's a story behind every single one of your songs. And we've got a few of them here today. The first one um, that I want to let everybody listen to is called Honey Child, which is the title track off of an EP that you put out in April, right? Yes, yes. So before we get into talking about um, the EP and some of the the other stories, uh, give us the story behind the song Honey Child. Kind of where did it come from and how did it come about? So my mom was visiting me in Nashville, helping me move into my condo, and she was borrowing my car because she flew here. And I had her, her picking me up and dropping me off at all of my work stuff, my co-writes and all that because she needed a vehicle. So it felt like I was kind of in, you know, elementary school again, getting carpooled by my mom. And I had a co-write at Sony and she dropped me off at the co-write. So I walked in just kind of my mom and I had this title written down, Honey Child from the week before that I think was inspired by a Lizzo song <laughs> And we sat down and I was just like, my mom is that person for me who I can tell anything to you and whenever things aren't going my way and I just feel like I can't win. She has like the perfect combination of telling you everything's going to be okay and kind of, you know, helping you feel better, but at the same time, giving you the pep talk and kind of the kick your butt into gear, you got this, keep working hard, keep being yourself, and everything's going to work out how it's supposed to. And that's kind of how we, we started writing it that day. And I was with my friends Ty Graham and Danielle Blakey. And it just worked out perfectly. I mean, the song, I didn't have the the story planned when I had that title, but it all just kind of fell together based on my mom being in town with me that week. Well, here, let's let everybody take a listen to it. This one is the title track off of her brand new EP. It's Honey Child by Julia Cole. Just want to go home. I ain't fitting it. They ain't getting it. Free falling so low. When you caught me on the phone, you let me edit it all out. All the twists and the turns and the hate and the birds holding me down. You said, baby girl, let it go. Honey child, keep growing wild Like a blue bonnet in the breeze yeah, you might have been, but you won't break No, your mama didn't raise you that way Oh yeah, yeah, so much you made up Oh yeah, yeah, go what you afraid of Be you, be you, to you And it'll all be sweet as
stay just who you are Yeah, trust your heart Oh, baby, don't you think That's a real fine place to start Honey, child, keep going wild Like a blue body in the breeze, yeah You might be, but you won't be No, your mama didn't raise you that way Oh, yeah, yeah, so much you made up Oh, yeah, yeah, go what you afraid of Be you, be you, to fool you And it'll all be sweet And that one was Honey Child by Julia Cole. And Julia, you just put out an EP last month, and you've been putting out uh, so much music, which is fantastic for fans. But putting out an EP in the middle of a pandemic had to have uh, kind of brought out its own challenges, right? (laughs) It is bizarre, to say the least. (laughs) I mean, it feels super anticlimactic because you just sit there and you're like, well, it's out. And you can't have a release concert. You can't go on tour to promote it. You can't even have like a, a party to right this piece of art that you spent forever working on and all these people were part of. There's really no way to honor that it's finally out and, and live. But at the same time, I think releasing music is so important during this time because people need music more than ever and everyone's going through one of the most bizarre and pretty awful situations globally that a lot of us have ever experienced or will ever experience. And um, music is what people need to get through times like this. So I'm going to keep releasing music as much as I can. And I've seen a lot of artists kind of doing the same thing. I think at first a bunch of people were, pulling their releases or pushing back the dates but especially now that we have no idea how long this is all going to last i mean like everything is canceled for for 2020 tour wise i think people are just going to start releasing all their music well and i think i've kind of noticed the same thing that song that artists are releasing songs closer together you know sometimes you'd see three or four or five six months in between releases but uh, even with yourself you put out the ep in april and then you had another song that uh, that dropped this month but outside of the uh, the touring and, and all the stuff that everybody can kind of see covid affecting how else has it affected you as as an artist and a songwriter well in the songwriting space it's been really weird because we're all trying to do zoom co-writes which means we can't I mean, there's a lag, there's a delay on the audio. So we can't really harmonize with each other. You can't play your instruments at the same time. Like I couldn't be playing guitar while somebody else was singing the words because there's a lag. So you really can't collaborate as seamlessly as you can, obviously, when you're in the room together. I think it's given everyone such an appreciation for how special Nashville songwriting community is because... I don't know anywhere else in the world where there are this many songwriters on the span of three streets, music row, writing hundreds of songs weekly. And we all miss that. So the songwriting process has been weird because of the zoom situation, but at the same time, it's still working. I mean, I don't think we're picking out songs as quickly because 
it just takes more time, might take a couple of sessions rather than just one to get through a song um, for a few different reasons, just getting in the vibe and even just recording vocals and sending them back. Like I just bought a microphone and I have a whole setup here that I record my vocals and then I send them over to whoever's building the track and we're collaborating that way. Um, but we're, we're still writing songs. And I still have some that I'm really excited about that we've written during this quarantine period. It's been really cool to see how innovative everyone's been and how a lot of people have refused to let it stop us from making art and doing what we love, writing songs. Well, and as a creative person myself, I know that this time, you know, being alone with my thoughts, I've done a lot more writing um, just in the, in the ways that I do. And it, it feels like it's been deeper and more personal stuff. Are you kind of seeing the same thing on, on the music side? It's a mixture. I've definitely written a lot of deep personal songs during this time period, but I've also written some <laughs> summer beach <laughs> fun drinking songs good too. we need those we're we're writing so many songs still that you kind of just go day by day and if it's like nice sunny weather a lot of times i'll bring my laptop in my back porch and just sit in the sun and write that way so it doesn't it doesn't have to always be i think at first we were all writing stuff about you know unity and we're gonna get through this and you know just the uncertainty of our current situation and everyone's lives, but you can only write about the same thing for so many co-writes before everybody's tired of writing about it. <laughs> and I think a lot of people have gotten back on the, let's write about, you know, anything else that's inspiring us. And we have a ton of ideas saved up from a million other events and inspirations. So we have a lot of ammo in the tank to, to still write about. That's that's good to hear as a as a country <laughs> music fan. And we have another song here that's uh, off of the EP. It's called Side Piece. Give us the story behind this one. Because I feel like there's definitely a story here. Oh, yeah. You want to hear the story? Oh, for aware. sure. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, it's definitely your good old Nashville cheating song. But my favorite part about it is the confidence and the the sass of the storyteller's perspective. It's definitely not one of those sad, I miss you, I can't believe you cheated on me kind of songs. It's like a, wow, I cannot believe you thought you were going to get away with that. That's hilarious. I feel so bad for you that you messed up <laughs> this whole situation. And it's, it's pretty sassy. And I know a lot of girls and guys who message me relating to it I've just, you know, used it as a fun anthem of, I think it's pretty usually the case that whoever's cheating on their significant other is most likely an idiot, and most people would agree with that, so side piece is definitely for all of those people out there. I think that's a good way to put it. Most people that are cheating on somebody are probably <laughs> an idiot. Well, here, let's let everybody take a listen to it. This one's called <laughs> Side Piece by Julia Cole. Deadline at the office, swear you ain't got a choice A Friday at the ball game, catching drinks with the boys A weekend at the lake house, when you knew I couldn't come Another late night workout, an early morning run So that's what you call your side piece, white light little stone
her thanks She's a saint for taking you off my hands <laughs> That's what you call your side piece White like little stories Trying to hide it from me Bless her heart, that poor thing Honey, I'm so sorry It's too bad you gon' miss me When you reach for the real thing And all you feel is lonely You can call your side piece Go ahead, call your side piece That one was Side Piece by Julia Cole. And Julia, I want to change directions a little bit because on top of being a fantastic artist, you're also a huge supporter of women's sports and, and making sure that they get the visibility that they can. And I think that's great. I've got a, a little sister who's about to graduate high school uh, from her car, actually, this year. But then she's, she's wow. headed off to play uh, college volleyball in New York. Share with everybody kind of what you're doing on, on that social media front. So my little sister and I started a social media movement called Women's Sports Social. And I originally started it because I noticed a couple of things. One, there are all of these influential women that people don't know played sports. And I really, really believe there is a huge amount of correlation between the work ethic and determination and handling constructive criticism and all those skill sets you learn in athletics that help you get to the top of your field in whatever that might be later on in life. And it's, it's people like, you know, Britney Spears is point guard of her basketball team. Cheryl Crow was an all-state track athlete. Gigi Hadid was captain of her volleyball team. Ellen DeGeneres was amazing at tennis. Um, Avril Lavigne is amazing at ice hockey. And the list goes on and on. There's all these incredible women who've proven to be so so successful in different fields, and they all played sports. And I just found it funny that none of those things were getting highlighted, yet you know, you'll see on the news Obama playing basketball or Justin Bieber spinning a basketball, and everyone talks about Sam Hunt's football career and all the guys who grew up playing sports kind of keep it as part of their story. So I definitely wanted to help bring a spotlight on the fact that it is actually really popular. People don't think women's athletics is as popular as it is, but a lot of girls grew up playing sports and learned a lot from it and benefited from that. So it started out that way, just spotlight. And then also just to be a platform for any woman to talk about, you know, what, she learned and how sports affected her and take ownership of her athleticism because I found that most women, you know, it's almost like women think that they need to be overqualified to claim that they're, you know, even qualified at all for something. So like a lot of people that I would talk to about athletics who played growing up, they'd be like, oh, but I'm terrible now. I haven't played in years. And it's like, that's not the point, you know, like you, you'll hear guys <laughs> talking about their high school football glory days when they have a beer belly and they're 65. So it's just, um, it's changing the way that women view their athletic background and letting them hold on to that ownership of their athleticism and be proud of it long after they're done playing sports. Um, so that's, that's definitely been fun to, to see people's post about their stories and how sports have affected their lives. And I try as much as I can to stop in at women's athletics departments and give them free concerts while I'm on tour. Well, that's I'm in awesome. their area. It's fun. You know, I don't feel like a lot of female athletes get as many as some of the male athletes do in different places. And so I'm just doing what I can to, make them feel special and and i also have a lot of fun hanging out with these girls because i relate to them and it's kind of fun to be in that sports world as much as i can and obviously i do all these national anthems so i'm on the sidelines of sporting events all the time and um it's been fun it's been really fun but yeah that's that's kind of the the gist behind women's sports social and how i try to advocate for women's athletics well, and how can how can people follow along with that? So there's an 
page at Women's Sports Social. And then I also, I've been hosting these coal team quarantine sessions on my Instagram. And I've been bringing on all sorts of really, really cool, influential friends of mine. Um, you know, some are, some are musical artists, some are models, some are TV personalities. And there's some pro athletes on there. And some that I've had are female pro athletes. I also had Katie Sauer. She's the first female NFL coach to coach in the Super Bowl um, for the 49ers. And I've had a few different female sports broadcasters who I've met on the sidelines of games that I was singing at and stuff like that, but you can follow along with some of their stories on there, and I post a lot of those on my IGTV as well that you can go back and watch. Well, and you touched on it right there, but you've also got the Cole team. What is that for everybody? So, people always refer to the crowd as an artist fan, and for me, I always found this, like, weird divide between fans and just like your friends and family and your crew. So you, it's like your friends and family, like even if they like your music, you don't want to call them your fans, you know, they're, they're definitely supporting you. And, and so I, I had the, the hardest time just trying to like figure out that verbiage. Cause I just didn't really like calling people fans. I wanted them to feel more included and, you know, it's not about them just being a fan of me. Like I'm a fan of them. I wouldn't have a job if they didn't show up and listen to the music. So the Cole team is just all of the people in my circle, whether that's anyone listening to the music or people working on my team or my family, friends, whoever, they're all part of the Cole team because we really do all do it together. I couldn't make, I mean, even that EP I just put out, that was completely crowdsourced. That was from people online on my socials who listened to music and wanted me to be able to record a project that funded the whole thing. So it's as much of a team as I've ever seen. That's definitely um, my goal is for it to feel like everybody's in it together. This isn't just my journey and my story. It's, it's all of ours. And I hope people can feel empowered and included and relate to to the music and also just to the story and the whole team. Well, so how do people follow you on social media? What are your social media handles? My social media handles are at Julia Cole music on all of them. I have Snapchat, um, Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, LinkedIn, obviously Instagram. And then the only one that's different is my TikTok. That's because, Julia Cole music with tape. It's like Julia Cole underscore music. Nice. And is there links to all of those on your website? Sure are. Perfect. Well, we'll make sure to put a, a, a link to that in the bio of, uh, or in the description of the podcast. So if you're listening, go to the description here, click that button and, uh, and follow Julia Cole everywhere. We've got one more song for everybody, but before we get into that, I want to talk about a really cool music video that you put out. Uh, I think it was last year, and it was for the song Trust You. And oh, it, yeah. it's really cool because you worked with um, some sign language interpreters and, and kind of explain to everybody what you did with that, what you did with the video and why you did it that way. So the video is basically myself singing the song next to a sign language interpreter signing all the lyrics of the song. And her name is Kylie. She started a company called Sign a Song. And their mission is to make music accessible to the deaf and hard of hearing. And I just loved that. I mean, it was the same thing as the Cole team. It's just inclusive. And it's, it's finding a way to make music you know, accessible for all these people who previously were kind of forgotten about in the music world. Like we weren't catering to can a deaf person enjoy your songs and your stories and they want music just as much as anybody else, you know? So it's definitely been really cool to see 
that entire community um, react the way they did after we made that video. We actually made it because Kylie made a Instagram post kind of doing a cover of Trust You after I released it. And I didn't know her. She just tagged me and, and posted it. And I, and I messaged her immediately when I saw it. And I was like, oh, my gosh, can we make a real video? Like, let's do this thing for real. And she was like, yeah, like, that's awesome. And we sent CMT and Leslie Fram loved it. And she put it all over CMT. And it was just a really cool moment for that community. Because I don't, I don't think I've ever seen another sign language um, music video on CMT before. So I was really proud to, to help be a part of that. Well, and that was a really cool, just watching it. I mean, you know, even, even though I'm not part of the, the deaf or hard of hearing community, just watching that, it put a different element into the music video that I think something like closed captioning or, or subtitles wouldn't have done in the same aspect. I mean, just the energy that she brought to the, uh, to the signing and to the song itself kind of lifted that video up a little bit even more, I think. She's really incredible. And the way she described it to me, it really actually is a different story. Like there are multiple different ways to sign certain words and some of them have different like emphasis. And she was, I mean, she had, she studied it and, and knew exactly how to do which signs and which body motions to even kind of imply that the music was getting louder or that it was a more emotional part of the song. And there's so much more to it than just actual words, which I didn't know before she taught me all that. So it was, it was really cool to see. And I definitely understand how that's such a better experience for the deaf and hard of hearing community because it's deeper than just reading the lyrics. For sure. And if you're listening to this after the podcast, go watch that video because it really is, <laughs> it, it brings a new level to that song. But Julia, we've got uh, one more song for everybody. It's a, a brand new song that you just put out this month. It's called white pearls. And again, I, I feel like I know the story behind this song without you having to tell me it, but go ahead and kind of give everybody <laughs> pull back the curtain a little bit. Well, this is one of my favorite stories, actually, behind any songs I've ever written. And it's I wrote this one in December by myself, sitting in my parents' living room on the floor in front of the fireplace. And it was the night before my grandma's 75th birthday party that my mom was throwing her. It was a surprise party. And my grandma had a liver transplant at 52. So her reaching her 75th birthday is one of the biggest miracles our family has been blessed enough to, to get to experience. And it was a really big milestone and big celebration. And my mom had the idea of like, you know, what's a present that she hasn't ever had before that she's actually going to care about more than us getting her just like a gift or whatever. And she was like, well, have you thought about maybe writing our song? And I had thought about it, but it's really intimidating to to try and write someone a song that you're like, you know, how is this lyric going to even be one fiftieth of as special as, you know, my grandma, Maudie is to me. And I just was like, well, I'll try. No promises. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> and I sat down and I just, the lyrics just kind of fell out. It was one of the most incredible songwriting experiences I've had personally because I didn't even like a lot of lyrics you have to like work on like you spend a lot of time crafting this one just kind of fell out like my hand was just writing and it was just there and then the song was there and I was like whoa it was so special how it happened and the next day I got to play it for her at her birthday party and it was just one of the most special moments and that's the story behind that one and, and the lyrics of the song anybody who loves their their grandmother and even their moms the song has 
has definitely become a mother daughter thing too, because I kind of wrote it as like the way my mom looks at her mom and the way that I look at my mom and my grandma. So I put it out. I mean, that's, you were mentioning how I released uh, the project and then this single pretty close together. And it's because I wanted this one to come out before mother's day. And I released it the Friday before mother's day. And that's, um, that's why I had those releases pretty close together. Cause I just, I was itching to get this one out. Well, and you can definitely just feel the emotion in this song. So we'll let everybody take a listen to it. It's called White Pearls by Julia Cole. You paint stories like the Sistine Chapel. Make heaven out of apple pie with sweet tea on the side. The way you talk to God like he's an old friend would make anyone want to meet him. You're the voice of reason when I'm losing my mind And oh, 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 you're how I know Angels wear white pearls And pray on front porch swings Love the piano And ain't scared of them near anything Their daughters turn to mothers Raising their own You got your own little garden of Eden Dogwoods and bluebirds feeding I can never quite get my front yard looking good as yours So I'll just have to visit much as I can Lord knows I miss you Your amazing grace inspires me Yeah, I got faith cause I believe came out just before Mother's Day. It's Julia Cole's newest single, White Pearls. Any big news for 2020, Julia? Any big plans? Uh, more music or anything like that once we get out well, of all I of this had, nonsense? I had so many plans for 2020, and they've just all been canceled <laughs> or postponed a year, which is, you know, as much as, as I want to complain, like the whole world is in the same boat right now, and Honestly, it's it's more for people like my my older sister uh, had a wedding scheduled for September that now they're rescheduling. It's, it's stuff like that that I you know there's a lot of things that are planned for this year that aren't going to happen. But like I was we were talking about earlier, the one thing that I think the world needs and we we are still capable of doing is releasing music. So I have a few new songs that we were really close to finishing before. Um, this pandemic hit and it's taken us a long time to figure out with the social distancing, how to get everything done. 
but you know we've been sending files over to guitar players and then we're tracking at their house and then sending files back and then us sending it to a drummer and then a bass player and a pedal steel player and getting them to send it back and then us just kind of sorting through all the takes and we're kind of like putting these songs together like puzzle pieces right now but you know we're, we're doing it as best we can so there will be some new music ready to come out i don't have dates yet but i do know it'll be through the ra- sooner rather than later there you go one more reason for everybody to uh, to head over to your website and julia we end every show the same way it's called the final four it's probably the four toughest questions that i'm going to ask you the whole time just because it makes you think a little bit okay <laughs> oh man all right <laughs> Okay, so the I don't first know if I'm one. Ready for this. <laughs> they're easy. They just make make you think. If you could go on tour okay. with anybody, alive or dead, who would it be? I told you they're tough. It is tough. <laughs> My first reaction, instinct, was to say Dolly Parton. That's a good pick. I just think I would learn so much from her on, you know, not only how to be an incredible artist and songwriter and, and person, but also businesswoman. And I've just, from everything I've read and, and seen, she just is flawless at handling herself and i just think that i'd be able to to learn a lot from her that that's a good pick and that that's good reasoning also (laughs) how about this one where were you and who were you with the first time that you heard one of your songs being played by somebody else where you didn't play it oh my gosh i can tell you exactly (laughs) i oh this is so funny so there is a bar. Well, actually, it's gone now. It was called South, and it was right on Demumbrian in Nashville, which is a very popular bar strip. And my friend Stephen Teaster is uh, or was one of the co-owners, managers of South, and I was in there all the time. And this was a day party on a Saturday, I think, because we were all we'd been drinking all day and just having a great time. And my song came on in the middle of the bar and I started crying. It was so funny because he was like, you're not supposed to cry when I do that. It's supposed to be a good thing. But I was just so excited and it caught me so off guard. I'll never forget that moment. And he won't either. I mean, that was, that was definitely the first time that happened. (laughs) That's awesome. Okay, how about this one? What's your favorite place that you've ever played? Traverse City, Michigan, Cherry Fest. I opened for Dan and Shay, and it was just the most perfect day. I was euphoric. I mean, the weather was perfect. The The festival was just this cute county fair kind of a festival with a little Ferris wheel and it was right on the water and all these boats had docked up to listen to the concert too. And the crowd was just amazing. Dan and Shay's audience is super similar to mine, like our demographic. And it was just, it was one of the most fun shows ever. And then the after party was even more fun. You know, Shay and I went out to a bunch of the bars in Traverse city and he and I are friends from Nashville already. And when we were there, we were just behind the bar you know, pretend bartending, kind of pouring shots for people and just having a blast. But that, I mean, I've got a bunch of video footage from that day, thank goodness, so I can just, you know, relive it. But there have been a bunch of really cool shows. Um, Other than that one, it would have to be probably my first national anthem for the Houston Texans, and that was in, gosh, is that in 2011? And there's 75,000 people there, sold out season closer, Texans Jaguars game, and, you know, jets were flying over. And I just, I remember that moment being really amazing, too. That's awesome. So that, that may tie into this last question. 
which is what is your favorite on stage memory? Favorite on stage memory. Um, I think the coolest, the coolest part of any performance for me is definitely when you can tell the crowd is reacting. You can tell the crowd is being moved and the crowd might be two people. The crowd might be 75,000 people, whatever it is. Like those are the moments I remember. And I can remember little, little shows where the little kids will come up on stage with me and dance with me on stage. That's, you know, any, anytime that's happened, like those are my favorite crowd moments that way but then um i think national anthem wise it's whenever the whole crowd like you can kind of tell sometimes when they start singing along or when you you hit a certain note and i've done enough of these anthems that like it's not always when the crowd like really reacts and really goes crazy and i've had a couple where you know, you hit the high note and the whole place just goes crazy. And there's really no feeling better than that. That's awesome. Well, Julia, thank you so much for jumping on here. It's been a blast. Uh, we'll have to do it again sometime in the future. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's been been really fun getting to chat with you and hang today. Absolutely. And guys, that was another episode of the Tea Party Podcast. It's a country music podcast where you find new friends and new music like Julia Cole.